Daniel here for Tabletop for One and my first impressions after six plays of World Wonders. And I thank you for joining me tonight. Now, World Wonders is a game designed by Z Mendez, and it's the latest offering from Arcane Wonders, or one of the latest offerings. And uh, they have provided me with this review copy of the game, so do take that into consideration when you listen to my review here. Now, World Wonders is a city-building game where you're building out the city with roads and towers and buildings and other things as you're trying to build out these great World Wonders. And so in the solo mode of the game, you are facing off against an AI who's going to compete with you for the most points. And so let's jump right in at the production quality. And I have to tell you, the production quality of this game is fantastic. Look at these World Wonders. Check these out. These are big wooden pieces of World Wonders. They are all different de designs. There's like, I don't know, 30 of them, 32 or something like that. There's a ton of them. They're all wooden pieces. Some of them are multiple pieces, like the pyramids here. There's just so many of them. It's just fantastic to look at and fantastic to see on the table. The tiles for the game, I do wish were just slightly thicker, but that's a small gripe. The rest of it is really well done and well produced. The cards are well done. Also, the iconography of the game is great. It's easy to read, easy to understand. Yeah, there's a lot of really good things that I like to say about this production quality. It's just a fantastic production. And so let's talk about the gameplay. Now in the gameplay of World Wonders, you're going to be taking turns with the AI. The AI goes first, you'll flip over a car, do the first action for the AI, and then you'll go to your turn. And so on your turn, you're going to be spending money on a market. There's a market of tiles, there are building tiles, there is some road tiles, there's towers, and you're going to decide whether to buy one of those things and put it into your city. There's also World Wonders, which I will talk about in just a minute. But as you're building things out, there's some really interesting design decisions here. See, there's a lot of different rules regarding roads and buildings and how they work along with the towers. And so roads can be built on your player board from the bottom up. There's a sidewalk, so the roads have to be adjacent next to a sidewalk or next to another road or next to a tower. And so as you're building things out, you're going to have a, a network of roads and towers and other things like that. And then you have the buildings, which the buildings can only be built either next to a road or next to another building of the same color. And then you have towers, which can be built next to anything that you have previously built. Now, the reason why you build out towers is towers allow you to build roads in areas that are otherwise unaccessible or just less accessible. And so as you build them out, you're going to be able to build roads adjacent to them and thus extend your city out further and build buildings next to those roads. And so with building out buildings and monuments, you're going to be moving up your resource tracks and your population track. As you move up your resource tracks, it'll increase your population. And as you move up your population track, it's going to give you more points. And so, yeah, there's a lot of really good decisions with that. Now each of the tiles costs a number of gold. You get seven gold around to spend. So you're gonna spend money on a tile, build out that tile, then uh, it'll go back to the AI's turn. And then the AI does its turn and goes back to your turn until you're out of money. And the game will end after 10 rounds or after the population marker gets to that final spot on the track. Now one of the ways you run out of money is if you buy a World Wonder. So you can buy a World Wonder at any point if you can fulfill its building requirement you just need to spend at least one gold, but you have to spend all of the remaining money you have for that round. And so this game has some really interesting decisions where you're trying to decide, do I buy the wonder that I want now? Because you only see two at a time. So do I buy it now or do I buy something else and wait till I have less money and then buy the wonder to end my round? But then you have to worry about the AI. Is the AI going to take that wonder? Because one of the actions on the AI's card is to take wonders off the board. And so you have to be very careful, kind of push your luck a little bit, make sure that you know, you're okay with losing that wonder if it doesn't work out for you because the AI took it. Yeah, there's some really good decisions here. There's a lot of strategy, a lot of tactics, and a little bit of push your luck. It all works out really well together, and I love it. And so let's talk about the ease of solo play. This game is so easy to play, so easy to learn. It's fantastic. And that AI, I have to tell you, this AI is near perfect for this game. It's a simple to run AI where you're just drawing a card and choosing the first available action on the list. And then you do that action, which usually means removing a building tile, or removing some road tiles, or removing a monument. And then it goes back to your turn. But the really interesting thing about the AI is how it scores. 
See, the way the AI scores on the easy mode is it gets the points from your resource tracks. You add up all three of your resource tracks and that's how many points the AI gets. But on the hard mode, the AI is also gonna score for the monuments it removes. So it'll get points for each of those. And so there's some really interesting decisions as you're trying to decide, you know, how far you're gonna advance your resource tracks. And then you're trying to make sure that the AI doesn't get too many monuments. And I have to tell you, it works so well. I, it's amazing how this AI works. It's just a fantastic design. I'm blown away by not only the AI's design, but also by the design of the game. I'll talk about that a little bit later, but let's talk about the replayability of the game. The replayability of this game is huge. The game is never gonna play out the same way. The monuments that come out of the deck are gonna be different every time you play because you just don't know how the deck's gonna shuffle, so you don't know which monuments you're gonna see. The tiles come out differently every time you play. There's two sides to the player board, and each player board is different on how the river is set up or where the natural resources are, so that changes how you build things out. Yeah, there's a lot of replayability to this game uh, with the fact that there is an AI that is difficult to beat and easy to run. There's just a lot going on for this game. And so let's go straight into my recommendation. Do I recommend this game? I don't know. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, of course I recommend this game. This game is fantastic. This game is a, an amazing game. It really is. And it has everything to do with how well designed this game is. It's one of those games that I would almost call a masterpiece of design. Because of the way it works, the way you're choosing when to buy tiles, when to spend tile, your money on a monument, you know, and canceling out your turn. When you're deciding to do those things as opposed to the AI, you know, thinking about what the AI might possibly take from the board and trying to buy things so that the AI takes from the tiles rather than from the monuments. There's so much going on. There's so many decisions to make. There's a lot of strategy here. There's a little bit of luck, but it works out so well. It's just a fantastic design. If I had played this game a lot more before I had made my top 10 list of 2023, this game would make that list. I'm not sure where it would be on that list, but it would definitely have made that list. So this game is one of the best games to be released last year. That is my opinion of it. You, you do need to take into consideration that this is a review copy of the game and the inherent bias that goes with it. But I have had so much fun with this game. It's just that good. And so there you have it. That was my first impressions after six plays of World Wonders by Z Mendez and Arcane Wonders. You'll have to let me know in the comments below what you thought of this review and what you think of the game. Please also like and subscribe to this channel if you like the content you see here. And I thank you very much to my Patreons who support me on this channel. And I thank you very much for watching me on Tabletop for One. Have a great night.